Welcome to the third episode from Chapter 3. And this episode is going to be over something pretty simple that you probably already know a lot about, and that's food chains and food webs. Now, however, there will be some new information that may or may not have been covered in one of your middle school level of science classes, so make sure you pay particular uh, attention to this. But this might be just an episode where you're only going to watch it one time, although you are free to watch it as many times as you like. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, let's talk about energy. How does energy move through the ecosystem? Now remember, energy is defined as the ability to do work. A living thing is going to need to do a lot of work as it stays alive. It's going to be able to get food. It may have to be able to run away from predators. It may have to work at uh, finding a mate. It'll definitely probably need to work at raising its young. Uh, internally, it's going to be able to break down molecules. It's going to have to... Uh, uh, create molecules through anabolic processes. So all this thing that a living thing is going to do during its lifespan is going to require energy. Now, energy flows in one direction, and it typically moves from the sun to producers because most producers are going to make their food through photosynthesis. And then it's going to move on to the consumers. Think of food chain and food webs that we're going to learn about here. And then finally to the decomposers. Decomposers are going to break down the consumers and the producers when they are no longer living. And then all those nutrients and materials are going to be put back into the, the cycle of life, so to speak. All right, what's a food chain? To keep it simple, it's just a series of who eats who. Right? And there's typically going to be certain levels. Usually it's just five levels at the most, but often just four. All right, so let's look at this picture here and we'll go all over it. All right. Okay, it always starts at the bottom. There's always producers. So the first part of any food chain is going to be a producer at some point, or a, a producer of some kind. And they're most often photosynthetic, especially in a terrestrial uh, or aquatic system. The only, way, only places you're going to find these chemosynthesis producers, or chemosynthetic producers, I should say, uh, deep in the ocean, and occasionally around some type of volcanic vent, but it's mainly more of a, a deep ocean thing. All right, so sun and water and some carbon dioxide are going to be used to make glucose. The next level is called a primary consumer. Remember, primary means first. That would be an herbivore. And then the next levels, these are all going to be omnivores, or they're going to be carnivores. So in this case, we've got a grasshopper, and here's a snake. So this would be a carnivore. And then finally, the hawk that would eat the snake, that's also a carnivore, okay? So your first level of consumer is called a primary level. Very creatively, your second level of consumer is called a secondary one. And then finally, the third one is tertiary. Now, if you don't want to write these fancy words, one degree symbol means primary, two degree symbol means secondary, and three degree symbol means tertiary. Oh. Now, eventually this hawk and this snake, and maybe this grasshopper, will pass away. Then a decomposer, in this case a fungus, will break down this organism and the nutrients will return back to the soil and it goes back into this cycle again, all right? We're going to talk about those biogeochemical cycles later in another uh, screencast, but they're part of that, okay? This should be something very similar that you've learned before, but you may not have gotten these fancy um, vocabulary words, so make sure you remember those, okay? All right, let's get rid of that, and let's move on to food webs. Food web is basically a complex interaction of all of the food chains within a certain ecosystem. So imagine you got just a bunch of food chains being looked at at once. That's what a food web is. All right, so here's a picture of an aquatic food web. And let's go with this blue here. Okay, now one thing we didn't put into this food web is everything always starts with the producer. And in this case, the producer is going to be plankton. And this would be actually Fast. photosynthetic plankton. So a lot of this photosynthetic plankton would be eaten by this krill, which is kind of a shrimp-like organism. 
And then this will be eaten by your primary consumer. So right here, that would be a primary consumer, a primary consumer. And even this guy here would be a primary consumer when he's eating that. Now, sometimes this fish will eat this squid. So when this fish is eating this squid, that fish is now acting as a secondary consumer. Same with this humpback whale. Okay, These guys up here in this line, they're going to be tertiary uh, consumers. And then finally, these uh, top-level uh, consumers, these would be called quaternary, which is a fancy word for four. Okay, So often we don't get above this level, but really no, no more than four. And we're going to learn about that later, is that in each different level, there's less and less energy available, so you can't support more than four levels. Okay? All right, we got one more slide to go in this episode, and this is about trophic levels. And this deals with that uh, concept that I just talked about on the food webs. Each level in a food chain or a food web is called a trophic level. And remember, the word trophic simply means to eat. So this is a level of eaters, okay? Now, always at the bottom, you got your producers. Always, always, always. So make a note of that. Put a little star, put a little check mark. Make sure you remember that one. Now, consumers are going to occupy every level after the first. So once you get past producers, consumer, 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 consumer. Okay? <clears throat> now, your primary consumers, these guys are always herbivores because they're eating the plants, all right? So herbs are plants. You're eating plants, all right? So remember, primary, one-degree symbol, two-degree symbol, three-degree symbol, and four-degree symbol, all right? And there's going to be less and less individuals at each level. And we're going to talk about that when we get to our ecological pyramids, which I believe will be our next episode. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on that flip side.